Hi, welcome to Take 5. My name is Ivan Ramirez and I'm a customer engineer here with Google Cloud. And today we have joining us... Ryan Prisbel. I'm a network specialist for Google Cloud. Okay, perfect. So Ryan, tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk to us about today. So I'm going to talk about the basic VPC construct that exists within Google Cloud environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, you got five minutes. Go. So as you see here, and I'm, and I'm presenting, this is sort of the, what we call a traditional VPC construct. If you've done any work in cloud with any of the cloud providers out there, this looks very familiar, right? When you build a VPC, it's bound by region, right? So in this example, I'm showing a VPC that exists in US West and a VPC that lives in US East. And I'm showing a little bit about how you connect those VPCs together, right? You build a VPN that then connects those two v, uh, VPCs together. So what I'm showing now is how Google has sort of approached the concept of VPCs, right? It's very different. As you see in the top, there's no internet, there's no VPN connectivity between the two, right? So when you build a VPC within Google's environment, you actually build it on a global basis, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is the VPC itself isn't constrained to just one region, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, I'm showing a VPC that I've built and I have subnets in two different regions, right? So here I have a subnet in US West and a subnet in US East. In the previous example, that would have been a VPC in US West and a VPC in US East. And to make them talk, I would have had to have that VPN. In here, you can see the blue arrow that shows a VM in US East can actually communicate directly with a VM in US West without actually having to go over the VPN. OK, so you're saying that a US West is a complete data center on its own. US East is a completely different data center. Correct. And you don't need to set up any kind of VPN to establish communications between those two. Correct. You're, when you actually communicate between those two, you're actually leveraging Google's backbone infrastructure. OK, right? so are these two like physically connected, or is it software-defined networking? So yes, they are physically connected by fiber infrastructure that Google owns. But okay. really, when you think about it from a cloud perspective, it's really the SDN control plane that's allowing you to move traffic between these these two subnets. Okay, is there any limit to the number of regions that you can put within a Nope, VPC? you can have a VPC contract and you can have subnets in every single region that we offer. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. So one of the things I want to show real quick is how easy it is to set one of these up. So before I do that, I'm going to show you an actual VPC that I set up, right? So this is the Take 5 Demo Network VPC. Within that, I have created three separate subnets, one in US Central, one in US West 1, and one in US East 1. Like I said, if you think about the old world VPC constructs, each of those subnets in US Central 1, West 1, and East 1 would have been their own VPCs. Mm -hmm. But in this environment, it's one VPC with the subnet actually being in each of those regions. Now, I have a quick question. This is something that customers ask me all the time. Uh, when it comes to cloud computing, the worry of egress is always uh, very large, right? So what... How does it work with a VPC? Is, is it, does it really count as egress between one region and another region within a VPC? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So in, in a manner of speaking, yes, you are sort of moving traffic, but it's not egress in the traditional thought of egress where you're egressing to the internet, right? Mm -hmm. You're actually just moving traffic between regions. So you're using Google's backbone. So there is a charge to do that, but it's not the charge that you get charged for like internet egress. Oh, okay. All right, interesting. So I'm going to show you real quick how easy it is to actually create one of these. So I'm going to create one called Ryan Test. I'm going to create a subnet. I'm going to create this one, uh, this one in Europe West 1, just to show you I can create okay. them globally. And you have access to all the regions there, right? Correct. And that's it. You can see it's going to create my test VPC right here, and it's going to populate that one subnet that I put in there. Now, as I was saying, you could put more subnets in all the different regions if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I just am demonstrating how easy it is to create just one. Okay. But that's how easy it is to create a, a VPC in Google's environment. So now, just one quick question. Uh, so you have the Ryan test and the Take 5 demo network. Can they communicate between each other? Would you have to set up like network firewall rules or...? So yes, they can communicate with each other, and we'll cover this a little bit more in depth in future videos in the series. But there's two ways that you can really connect a VPC together, right? Mm -hmm. So one, you can do what we call VPC peering, which, okay. which really sort of merges the SDN control plane of those two VPCs together, right? Mm -hmm. And allows VMs in one to talk to VMs in the other, right, across that SDN control plane, right? Uh -huh. The other way to do it is actually to build a VPN tunnel between those two um, VPCs. And when you do that, you can actually share specific subnets versus if you, if you peer the two, all the subnets in one will be able to see all the subnets in the other. Mm, got it. So depending on what level of communication you want between the VPCs, whether it's all to all or you know, part of it to part of it, mm -hmm. you can use either VPC peering or VPC um, uh, VPNs between the two VPCs. Okay, great. Well, that was really easy. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet, man. All right. Thank you.